In this video, we will go over solving rectangular matrices and um, to solve a matrix formulation in which we have a rectangular matrix, we need to find the pseudo inverse of a matrix as opposed to just finding the inverse of the matrix. So let's see how we do that. Earlier in the course, uh, we had a matrix formulation of AX equals B uh, in which we were writing down some simultaneous linear equations that we obtained by applying nodal analysis to a circuit. And then we took those equations and formulated that as a matrix problem, AX equals B. In this case, A was a square matrix. Number of rows were equal to the number of columns. In this case, small n and small n. Uh, this matrix was square and also invertible and it essentially contained the information about the circuit or we could also think of it as information about a system. The column vector x was, a, was n rows and one column and it contained the unknown quantities which we were solving for. And the column vector b, the right hand side, was also n by one, n rows and one column and it contained the known quantities. Um, and we were solving for unknown, so we did x equals, we inverted the matrix A and then we just mul multiplied it with the column vector B. Now to see this um, a little bit closely or to relate these matrices or vectors uh, to a circuit, let us quickly look back at the circuit we um, observed in the quiz. So we had a, uh, this was problem four on quiz two, and we had a few resistors, two voltage sources, and we were asked to um, write this as AX equals B. So here are the solutions, and if you notice, the matrix A contains information about the circuit because all these entries are related to the resistor values which are part of my system or part of my circuit. My X vector here, contains the unknown quantities. Over here we were after nodal voltage A and node voltage B. So my X vector, column vector was VA and VB. And on the right hand side, my column vector B is essentially the known quantities. And known quantities over here are my source voltages V3 and V4 and some resistors that are related to those voltage sources. So we said A, which is the system or the circuit, x unknowns equals b which is known and we try to solve for x generally to find the unknown quantities v a and v b so that's how uh, we um, did uh, some experiments earlier in the course uh, and in all of this everything was good because we were able to invert the matrix a as long as it was square and the determinant of a was not equal to zero so if you view this matrix formulation, A was a square matrix, number of rows equals number of columns, X was a column vector, and B was a column vector as well. But that's not always the case. What if A is not a square matrix? Now we, we, we would start considering A as a rectangular matrix in which we have our number of rows different from the number of columns. Now, if you have number of rows different from the number of columns, in this case, we are considering uh, the number of rows to be small m and the number of columns to be small n. And just, uh, so we are, we are considering the number of rows to be greater than the number of columns. So when does this happen? Well, this happens when we have taken several experimental uh, measurements and many of them we don't even need. So we have taken more data than we need. We have more information than we need and we are still trying to solve for x. So ax equals b remains as is. However, our size of a has become rectangular and b has also increased in size. x has remained the same. So we still have n unknowns to solve for. So how are we going to invert this rectangular matrix? Well. We cannot. So instead, we are going to invert its uh, 
A transpose A. So we are going to find the pseudo inverse as opposed to just the inverse. Now how do we find the pseudo inverse of a matrix A which is rectangular? Well we need to do A transpose multiplied by A and then we invert the matrix to find the pseudo inverse. So let's see how we get to this uh, pseudo inverse solution. If we start with our original problem which was AX equals B, A is rectangular, X is a column vector, B is also a column vector. Now I cannot straight away invert A and then multiply by B to find X because A is now rectangular. So instead I will try to first multiply both sides of my equation with A transpose. Uh, and we'll talk about transpose a little bit more on the next slide. So once I multiply both sides by A transpose, I have a matrix A transpose A, which is now square, which I can invert. So once I invert that and multiply by the right hand side, which is A transpose B, I can solve for X by doing this. So I find the pseudo inverse, then multiply it with A transpose B to get my unknowns. So let's see what this transpose is. So transpose of a matrix is very simple to calculate. You just need to flip the matrix over its diagonal. Uh, in other words, you need to write the rows of A as the columns of A transpose and the columns of A as the rows of A transpose. So you're switching all the rows with columns and columns with rows. Uh, let's take a look at an example over here. We have a rectangular matrix. Uh, in which our elements in the first row are AD, second row are BE, third row are CF. And if we were interested in finding the transpose of this matrix, we would essentially write the first column, uh, go back, the, the first column as our first row. And then the second column will become my second row. So essentially flipping the matrix will give us our result. Uh, let us also look at how we do the transpose of a matrix in MATLAB. So let me pull up my MATLAB window and then I'm going to essentially begin with uh, declaring a matrix A. Uh, some elements say I have uh, one and two in my first row, uh, three, four, and five, six. So I have A as that, and if I want to find the transpose, I would simply say AT equals, I would use the function transpose of A, and I would get the, so you can see the first column is now the first row here, the second column here is the second row now. Um, you could also write the same statement as uh, AT equals A transpose. So by just using an apostrophe, it does the same job. However, uh, if the elements in A are complex, then it will actually do a complex conjugate while it switches the rows with the columns. So you could, you could do this as long as the elements in A are real values. So it will do the same job. Uh, I recommend you uh, using the function as opposed to the apostrophe. Um, if you choose, you do use to. Uh, if you choose to use the apostrophe, make sure that your elements are uh, real. Okay, so going back over here, where were we? We were here. So here we've got uh, the solution for x. Find the pseudo inverse, which is a transpose multiplied by a. Invert that matrix and then multiply it with A transpose B to find the unknowns. Uh, we talked about the pseudo inverse. We saw an example over here as well as in MATLAB. Now let's revisit our solution and see if it all makes sense. If we assume that A is rectangular and the size of A is M rows and N columns, the size of the transpose of A would be N by M. So the number of rows will now become the number of columns and vice versa. Which means if I now try to multiply A transpose with A, because the inner dimensions match, we are going to be able to do that. So A transpose is N, N by M, 
uh, a is m by n the inner dimensions over here are going to be m and they match which means it th this can be done uh, a transpose a is now going to result in a square matrix and it w the size of that square matrix is going to be n by n because those are my outer dimensions um, and something to note over here a transpose a is now square so it might be invertible however we still need to check the determinant of a transpose a as long as the determinant is not equal to zero and it is square we will be in able to invert the pseudo inverse we will be able to compute the pseudo inverse all right i hope uh, you find this uh, video helpful in solving rectangular matrices